Hey guys, this is Evan Summers. I'm here with my lovely wife Jennifer and our good friend Dana from Whole Health Dana. As we are every week, um, every Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern with your weekly essential oils class. This week we are finishing up or, or giving you a part two to last week's back to school week. Last week we talked primarily about um, back to school from the home standpoint and from the ability to utilize your oils to, um, to navigate back to school from the home, basically in preparation for back to school. This week we are referring more to back to school in class. So using oils at school, at daycare, away at college, um, and things of that nature. So first and foremost, we can't really get into this topic unless we talk about why. Um, and that and why is always a big thing for me. I, I'm never one who accepts somebody's answer on the surface. I always kind of have to ask the why behind the question. So why essential oils at school? Well, there have been plenty of studies that have come out that have shown that essential oils are beneficial in school environments. You even have students who are doing their own research taking essential oils to school and doing their own science fair projects in order to validate and verify the impact that essential oils have in the classroom. So blind, I mean, you, some could say that, you know, they're not doing true scientific testing, but when you look at what they're doing and they're setting up a specific essential oil in a class and then no essential oil in another class, or they break up the school year where they're using oils for half the year and no oils for half the year, and they're seeing viable differences in attendance and viable differences in uh, testing scores, recognition, and attention in the school, you can see that there's a vast and very much improved difference in the use of essential oils. So there is controversy. This is, of course, like everything else, there is nothing without controversy. So first and foremost, you have a lot of people, a lot of parents, a lot of school systems that are up in arms over anything. Um, we're in a very litigious society. We have a lot of people who will look for the first and most convenient way to file a lawsuit against somebody for something, just in the, the get rich quick mentality. So if a child gets a cough or gets a cold, or has some type of a negative reaction to essential oils in the classroom, it wouldn't surprise me to see parents try to sue the school system or the individual teacher or the child's parents who brought oils to school. So it's important to know the research on both sides of the coin. There are proper protocols on how to introduce essential oils into a classroom and use them effectively. First of all, do it in partnership with the, with the educator. Do it in partnership with the parents of the students in your school, and at least in your classroom, and of course with the administration. Um, get a permission slip that outlines exactly what your intent is, why you want to introduce essential oils. How do they compare? You don't have to draw up an hour-long dissertation for family but it is something that you want to create at least a basic permission slip so the child can take it home to their parents, have it signed off, and bring it back. And that way you've got written permission to be able to use essential oils in the classroom. Some parents are not going to like it. If you look on the web, um, like everybody likes to, there's a lot more negative people than there are positives, which is always the case. More people will always complain than praise. So you will find a lot of negativity um, about allergic reactions or um, somebody had a, somebody is, you know, in, is affected negatively by the scent of say lavender or peppermint or whatever the case may be and they're up in arms over somebody even bringing essential oils to school. To that I challenge with the question of all of the chemical cleaners that are being used in schools on a regular basis. Um, during this week's live broadcasts, I was doing some, I was reading some testimonials from teachers about how they used to use Clorox wipes daily in their classrooms. They always kept hand sanitizer on their desk next to the tissues. 
Um, some of them have now advanced beyond that and they're using different type of essential oil sprays to help knock down some of the bacterial growth in their wounds or using that to disinfect and clean their, their classrooms uh, instead of using the toxic cleaners. But I would challenge the, the um, air freshener plugins in the wall. Nobody's questioning those. Nobody's questioning the cleaning products. Nobody is questioning the perfume that some of the teachers and students are wearing. Perfect timing on that, Dana. Um, <laughs> so there, you know, these questions have to come up as well. If if you're going to disallow essential oils because you are you have a fear that somebody may have a negative reaction, then you should be disallowing any and all scent, any and all aroma that's good, that may perhaps get their way into this otherwise sterile, which it really isn't, environment. Um, so, so there's a challenge there, and it might not be an easy conversation. This, this is why I'm saying to get everybody on board so everybody understands exactly what you're doing, and even do it for a short term. If you're an educator that's watching this and you want to introduce essential oils to your classroom, do it on a short-term basis at first. Do it for a week. Do it for a month. See what the response can be in your classroom before you get into a, a year-long program uh, where that works. So one of the things I want to talk about with this is how. How can you introduce essential oils into a classroom environment? Well, before I get into the hows of applying oils, using them in the class, let me show you a couple of ways that you can personalize the experience. And this is something we briefly touched on last week, but I want to get into something that you could use if you're an educator and you want to teach your curriculum around essential oils. So if you've included it in, in your classroom, but now you also want to kind of round out the education, you can teach using, well, for example, something as simple as a glass spice jar. So, and this really is nothing different. This is a plain glass spice jar, metal cap with a little plastic um, sieve on top. Here's how this can benefit a classroom. Take a single cotton ball, drop a cotton ball inside this um, spice jar, put a single drop of essential oil on that cotton ball. You can put a little um, put a little number on there. One, let's say you do ten different ones. You do numbers one through ten. You can pass that around the class, and you can kind of test the sense of smell of your students. Play a game. Identify what's in that particular jar, and whoever gets the most right could win something. Or you could use um, the scent as a memory game. What does this smell remind you of? What do you think of when you, when you smell this particular aroma? So you kind of incorporate essential oils into a classroom learning environment. If you are involved, say, in the sciences, you can do a, you can do a classroom about, you can do a, a lesson about how the plants grow, what the essential oils are used for, where are they found on the plant, um, how is it processed, how, does, how do you get essential oil from the plant material. All sorts of ways to incorporate lessons around essential oil into the curriculum. Uh, so there's, there's a number of ways you can do it. From an engineering standpoint, it might be a good experiment to create a distillation still, whether it's for you know, a desalinization uh, process or to distill plant material into essential oil. There's a number of ways that you can do that as an educator introducing oils to your school. Um, so you don't just have to go with a diffuser on the shelf, leave it there, good to go. A um, couple of ways that teachers have done it in the past um, that, I was, that I talked about this week with the uh, testimonials. There was a teacher that went into her classroom and was having problems with testing weeks. Two weeks long of standardized testing and she wanted to change the heightened stressful nature of her classroom during testing weeks. So she took a cotton ball and 15 minutes before the students came in the room, she put a drop of lavender on that cotton ball. 
she placed the, the cotton ball behind a fan on her desk and just let the lavender aroma waft through the classroom. And then every hour, she added another drop to that cotton ball. And she just continued that for two days. And she saw a very noticeable difference in the anxiety level, um, a very noticeable decrease in the stress and anxiety, a much greater attention to detail, and a greater ability for people to stay focused on their test with just a single drop of lavender. She didn't believe the results, so she stopped the next time the testing came around. The first day of testing, she didn't do the lavender on the cotton ball. She just wanted to see the difference, and the anxiety came right back. And the next day, she started doing the cotton ball trick again, so to speak, and immediate difference like night and day with her students from that point on she was sold on the use of essential oils in her classroom so let's say you're in an environment where you can't get permission to use essential oils in that particular school but you as a parent know how well they work your students your child is on board they love their essential oils they get benefit out of them at home and you want to give them benefit at school. You guys see me talk all the time about my inhalers. I love my essential oil inhalers. This is the easiest way to personalize the experience. Um, you apply five to 10 drops to a cotton wick that, that gets dropped in the back. It gets capped off and then all you have to do is wave the inhaler stick under your nose and just inhale, inhale deeply. That will give you an immediate personal aromatherapy experience. You can do that with any scent, any number of scents. You can change up the inhalers and try different things. Um, Dana has, and I always forget to mention it because I don't have any of them myself, but Dana has some aromatherapy jewelry. There are pendants that are specifically made for necklaces or bracelets that have a lava stone. You can add oil to the lava stone and you get, the sim you get a similar type of effect where you get bathed in the essential oils for a few hours during the day. Um, of course, we always talk about the roller bottles. Roller bottles are an absolute must to personalize the experience. This is a regular full-size roller bottle. You would apply the oils to the back of the neck. You could apply to the throat. Uh, behind the ears, uh, apply to your pulse points. Again, it's a great way to personalize the essential oils experience without necessarily overwhelming the entire room. Um, oh, thank you, Dana. Uh, without overwhelming the entire room with whatever scent you personally find appealing. Now, maybe using the full-size roller bottle is too much. Maybe you want to bring multiple scents with you. Dana turned me on to these. This, that looks like a regular sample bottle of essential oil, is actually a tiny little roller bottle. I love this. It's a two milliliter bottle. Um, it's perfect to take with you. In fact, I have now taken all of my oils and I have done a sample bottle of every single one of the oils I have, so I can take this with me every time I do a class. So if somebody wants to smell what a particular scent is that they, ne that they don't necessarily have available or I wouldn't think to bring a full bottle of, or something that I would want to protect with my life, like jasmine or Roman chamomile uh, or rose, I'm going to only bring a small bit of it and be able to pass that around so people can smell the purity, um, they can experience what that particular oil is going to smell like and maybe get some benefit out of that immediately. So those little tiny roller bottles are amazing. If you guys want to find them, let me know. Um, I'll post the link uh, when we post the replay of the video. Uh, I'll put a link up on the event page as well. All right, last thing I wanna go over with this. And I love this idea. And this, of course, all of these tips translate beyond school. These translate into real life as well. So this particular tip is something that I talk about quite a bit, especially on the emotional side of oils. 
um, guidance counselors, administrators, um, this would be a perfect tip and a perfect way to use oils in those offices. If you know somebody who's a, who's a emotional uh, counselor or a grief counselor or, um, or of any kind, these tips would be perfect to be able to relate to them. So here's what we do. I have mason jars. I know Dana has heard this tip 100,000 times by now. I take mason jars and I will fill the mason jar with water. I'll add my oils to the mason jar. So why is this so important for a counselor? Well, if you have a particular blend of oils that seems to work really well for a particular emotion, um, and I'll reference doTERRA in this regard, there's an emotional kit that covers six different blends of oils. If you are using one of those blends, you can create it in that jar. And then 15 minutes before your appointment comes in, let's say you've got somebody who is struggling with grief, you can pop open the mason jar that has the cheer blend or the console blend, put that in the diffuser, let that run for the 30 minutes or the hour of your appointment. And instead of tossing that leftover water with the oil down the sink, pour it back into the mason jar, label that jar with whatever that blend happens to be, and then reach for the next bottle. And then just repeat that same process. So every time you have somebody who's coming to your office, you can personalize their experience. You can do it at home. You can do it at work. You can do it anywhere without tossing out your oil and tossing out that water. Um, and you can personalize whatever experience you have. Um, I have four or five different blends in dropper bottles that I have up on the shelf behind me. So I'll make up a dropper bottle with a particular blend that I know I'm going to use frequently. I'll just reach for that bottle and I'll just use the dropper to put the oils in my diffuser that way. So those, yeah, that's some of the, those are some of the best ways to impact school using your essential oils. Obviously, the best overall way for the best benefit is to break out a diffuser, set a diffuser up in the classroom. Um, there are some classrooms teachers have reported that if, they forget, if the teacher forgets to turn on the diffuser, the kids are racing to her class to be the first one there because if they don't see the teacher started the essential oil diffuser, they're gonna run in, grab the diffuser, fill it up, and they're gonna, they get to pick the oils that, get, that get, um, get used for that particular day in class. I was reading a testimonial from a college student and they went to school. They'd, always, they'd been using essential oils already at home. They love their oils. They use them throughout high school. It helped them focus. It helped them with tests. They went to college and they took their mom's essential oils with them because they didn't have their own yet. So they took mom's oils with them. And when they studied, they used lavender essential oil in the dorm. And immediately the lemon clears and purifies the air. It sets up a learning environment unlike any other dorm room. And other people kept coming up to this guy wanting to study with him because his room was the best room in the dorm. Everybody wanted to. So, okay, if even on the off chance that essential oils did nothing for this guy, he made a whole bunch of new friends just because his room smelled lemony fresh. Um, so there's something else to think about. You know, even on the college front, there's, there's a great, great benefit in using oils. Um, I'm going to open it up for questions. Let me check the chat real quick. Um, some of these I know we caught as we went. Um, B wants to know what percentage of oils are in the blends. Um, B, it really depends in some cases on the, um, it depends on the age of the child that you are making up a blend for. Generally speaking, when I am making up a roller bottle, I do a 5% dilution for um, anybody that's in their teenage years to adult. I'll do 5%. It is a little on the heavy side, um, but most people can tolerate 5% without having any type of an adverse reaction. 
Um, and just to put it in perspective, a 5% dilution would be 10 drops in a 10 milliliter roller bottle. Easiest way to remember that is the 555 rule. Five drops five in a 5 mil bottle is a 5% solution. So if you up it to a 10 mil bottle, then 10 drops would still be the same 5% solution. So in that little roller bottle that I showed you, this tiny little beast right here, that's a two mil bottle. There's only two drops of essential oil in there, and the rest of it's coconut oil. Um, so, I, so that's done as a, at a safer percentage for people. Uh, if you guys want, if you have any questions, go ahead and unmute yourself and go ahead and ask away. Once we finish the Q&A, we will stop the recording and then open it up for any open questions that are even stuff that's off topic. Everybody's still muted. No one has anything to say. You guys are going to make me talk to the cats. <laughs> I can unmute everybody because I have that power and make you speak. So talk to the cats. <laughs> Let's be clear. You can mute us, but you can't force us to talk to you. I can't, but, but I can have somebody sneak up behind you and tickle you. Well, you could do that to Jennifer. She's in the same house. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us, I'd like to see that happen. <laughs> hey, B, do you have a question? So um, to your answer about the percentages, so five drops in five mils is 5%. 10 right. drops in 10 mils is 5%, right? Correct. Now, okay. if, oh, if you're doing, I'm sorry, you're right. I only, I only half answered that. So if you, are, um, if you are making a blend for a child between the age of 6 and, generally speaking, 6 and 12, 6 and 13, you want to cut that in half. And, of course, you also want to watch closely. You want to make sure that there's no adverse reaction, um, that you don't end up with any kind of a rash or burning sensation. There are some oils particularly like cinnamon, cassia, oregano, clove, that you want to keep in, in even smaller dilutions. Um, and I know this is going to sound difficult, and, and that's why usually when you get a blend of oils, like in the, the pre-done roller bottles, they're usually pre-blended. Uh, in some cases, you can have five or six oils in there, but in some cases, you might have them literally at half a percent um, or less. Because they're oh. making such big batches, it might be something where for you, you may be doing a 10 mil <laughs> model. But if you're doing a thousand 10 mil models, then you can work your way all the way down to fractions of a percent. And there are some oils that you really want to be uber careful of because there is a topical max that should be paid, paid close attention to for the safety of your child. Okay, so two drops and two mils is 5% also, right? Correct, correct. Okay, uh, that's just uh, depending on the volume. Also, I wanted to ask you, um, the doTERRA blends, are they, there's something added to the essential oils, right? No, all of their blends are strictly the oil, unless, and they all have an ingredient list, which um, on this particular bottle is just, way, way, way too small for me to be able to read. Okay. Um, but they all have an ingredient list on the blends. There will be, like they have a line of roller bottles that are pre-diluted. They call it their doTERRA touch line. And okay. supposedly, according to the, um, the heads of the company, that's actually a line of oils that they are fully intending to add more to. Uh, I don't know what the percentage is. They don't release the percentage on the touch line of oils, but it is a roller bottle that is already pre-diluted, uh, and it's pre-diluted for safety. And they're, right now they have nine oils. Nine of the ten oils that are included in their starter kits are part of that touch line. Okay. On the On Guard, um, on guard specifically, is that – 100% essential oil, or is there 
Is there a cook? Is no, there's, there a, there's yeah. no carrier. That, that's, a, that's a straight oil. Now, if you wanted to, now there is, as part of the touch blends, the, the touch kit, there is a pre-diluted on-guard roller bottle. Okay. But if you're just buying the bottle of, uh, of oil, then you're just okay. getting the oils themselves. There's no pre-dilution on that. Oh, I see. Okay, that, that explains that. I think that um, both Balance and Terra Shield have a carrier oil in, in the actual bottle. Do you know that, Evan? Off the Is top of my right? head, I don't. Um, okay. I'd have to, I would have to look at them to, to know for sure. Um, I know there are one or two that do, and that's based on some of the oils that are uh, in the ingredient list. Okay, so for pets and children, you uh, be careful with using the tree, the tree, um, the tree ones as far um, as the for part. cats specifically. Um, you okay. don't want to use Melluca on any animal. Uh, uh -huh. Melluca is uh, could be highly toxic to both cats and dogs. That's one that you want to avoid on both. Uh -huh. um, but specifically on cats, a lot of your tree oils and your citrus oils can be dangerous. Okay. As a general rule, now there's some, you know, if you're if you're using it in a uh, diffuser, you're generally safe. Um, you're not going to have, you know, if you add a drop of of Melluca to a cleaning solution, you know, don't, your your pets are not just going to suddenly drop dead on the floor because you used a drop of, of Melluca. Um, you want to be, you just want to be careful and not like have it on your hands and then immediately pet your animal. Uh, I see. You know, using it in the diffuser is, is a completely different story. And as long as they have an open door where they can exit the room on their own without feeling trapped, you're usually going to set yourself up in better condition. I have grandchildren, too. They're ages three and five. Um, what do you – I want to make some monster spray. Okay. Um, what do you recommend to be a mild uh, – essential oil. I know lavender is, is pretty safe for kids, but uh, do you recommend something like uh, uh, chamomile or geranium or? Um, Roman chamomile is good. Um, cedar wood is also good. Um, I would avoid it with children that young. You said, what are the ages again? Three and five. Three and five. That's what I thought. Okay. Um, I would avoid um, eucalyptus, I would avoid peppermint. Uh, I know that's, those are the two that's kind of everybody's go-to when it comes to like respiratory issues. Uh -huh. so I would avoid both peppermint and eucalyptus. They're, they can actually have a, an effect of closing the airways in young children. So you want to oh. be careful of that, um, which is kind of okay. funny because when I think about how many times growing up, my mother used to rub a eucalyptus, an unnameable mm. eucalyptus greasy rub on my chest to help with breathing. I remember um, that too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and yet, you know, those are things that can be more harmful than beneficial. So you want to mm -hmm. be very cautious. And I would say that if you are going to use it, you use it during times that you're awake. You don't want to do it, put them to bed, and then you go to bed and, and, and they end up having a negative reaction while you're sleeping. Okay. And yes, oh, somebody Dana. asked what a monster spray was. <laughs> <laughs> go, go ahead, B. You can, you can explain it. It was your question. Go ahead and oh, explain to Dana was, uh, what the monster spray is. Sometimes toddlers have a lot of fears and everything. They have trouble sleeping. So what, what, my, what I want to do for my grandson is to make up a bottle of, of essential oil. I want to put lavender in whatever. I want to have him smell them to find out which one he likes the best and then put it in a tiny two ounce bottle and have him spray like under the bed, in the closet, around <laughs> the floor, and then he can go to sleep and he won't be so scared. Yep. He won't think a monster is going to come out from under the bed. And, and oh, that is genius. It doesn't even matter what you use as long as he likes it. Yep. You yes, could use, exactly. Psychologically speaking, you could use plain water, but you know, that um, you could also, you know, you could also do, different variations on that. You know, I love the cotton ball trick because it's something uh -huh. that most people have in their house. Uh -huh. So if you just take a cotton ball and you put a drop of lavender and a drop of cedar wood, for example, on the cotton ball, mm -hmm. and you have, you have him put the cotton ball under the bed, 
and you give uh -huh. them another one to put in the closet, you know, uh -huh. and, and you can say that, you know, those are, those are deterrents. Those are, those are, you know, that's, that's a, a way that the monsters can't get past, you know, it's yeah. a, a monster repellent pill. Yeah. He always says he, he, he wants to do it. He wants to do it. He's yep. a toddler. So, um, <laughs> So, uh, and then Ken, I'll, I'll tell him that the, the, the monsters don't like lavender or the monsters don't like chamomile. So that's the way to keep them away is to <laughs> spray it on their pillow or whatever. Yep. And they can put little, they can put stuff, they can customize their bottle and put sticker on it, like a little monster sticker. I would. Like <laughs> tree. I, I, I would start yanking <laughs> stickers off of banana bunches in the grocery store and put them all over stuff. <laughs> I put one on my mother today at the store. <laughs> That's funny. I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dwayne has unmuted himself. Dwayne, you got anything you want to ask? No, not really. Okay. <laughs> Carrie, did you have anything you wanted to know? I know you had unmuted yourself for a while and went, went back to silence. And now she took a nap. She just wanted to know what monster spray was, but you answered her question. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm good for now. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if there's no other questions, I'll go ahead and shut off the recording. Then we can open it up for open questions. Uh, one more time for those of you who are watching the replay, who've had this replay shared with you. Um, if you're watching our Ugly Mug on YouTube, Remember, we do this every single Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's an open class uh, for all levels of uh, understanding and knowledge in the world of essential oils. We topic every single week. I couldn't tell you yet what next week is because I haven't talked to Dana about it. Um, but we have a topic every week, and at the end of that week's topic, we always open it up for topic-related questions. Then we close off the recording and open it up for an open Q&A. So you're welcome to join us. Follow the Summer's Wellness page on Facebook. The event for this is always shared on there. So you can click on the link and join us every single Sunday. Thank you guys for being here. I hope you have a great week. Thank you, Evan.